But I came upon this story the other night, and I had heard about this case before, as a lot of people probably have who follow these cases. But this is another uh, story, very somewhat similar, not entirely similar, but somewhat similar to the case of the boy in the box. Now, this little boy was found in 1963 now he finally has a name a toddler was found dead in Oregon in the 1960s he went decades without a name on his grave becoming one of the oldest case cases of unidentified human remains in the state now thanks to genetic testing genealogy his name and his story are finally known the decomposed body was found by a fisherman on July 11, 1963 in the water of the King County Reservoir in Jackson County, Oregon. The boy, fully dressed, was wrapped in a blanket and quilt with iron molds inside in an attempt to weigh his body down in the water. The little boy's identity has remained a mystery for decades. In 2009, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children created a composite image to try to generate new leads. The University of North Texas Center for Human Identification uploaded the boy's DNA profile into the database CODIS, but no hits were found. Later, investigators turned to genetic genealogy through which an unknown suspect's DNA left at a crime scene can be identified using his or her family members who may submit their DNA samples to the database. This approach also can be used for unknown victims. Genetic genealogist C.C. Moore, also a consultant for ABC News, found several of the boys' relatives and researched their family tree to narrow down the boy's immediate family. A man identified as a possible brother told investigators he had a younger brother with disabilities named Stevie, who lived in Oregon in the early 1960s, but he had mysteriously vanished from the family with little explanation. Authorities requested New Mexico birth records for babies with that name born in the late, 1960, late 1960 or early 1961. This led investigators to Stephen Alexander Crawford, born October the 2nd, 1960. The possible brother agreed to share a DNA sample, which proved he was the half-brother of the boy. This little boy was disabled, he was loved and missed by his family and deserved to have a name and identity. Stevie's case was a very emotional one for all of the investigators. Once the genetic genealogy research led to his family, the fact that he had surviving family had been very loving and willing to assist has been a great comfort, said Moore. Stevie lived with his mother, who has since died. Jackson County Sheriff's officials said his suspected father lived in California at the time and is also dead. Stevie's cause of death isn't clear. There's no evidence to support that he was killed, but his secretive burial and lack of family information is considered suspicious. Stevie's exact disability is not known, is also not known, but it was very likely that he had Down syndrome, and his disability or a potential lack of medical access could have led to his death. Parents or caregivers will become overwhelmed. I'm not making excuses for them, but they may become overwhelmed with a disabled child with, and especially in 1960, 61, when there probably had not been a lot of 
information about those types of disorders or disabilities or birth defects or whatever else he may have had. Um, it could be possible that they killed him in a fit of rage in a moment of... Or it could be that he died naturally and they were afraid to... Which doesn't make a lot of sense unless this family was extremely poor and couldn't afford a funeral, which is still wrong because, you know, um, either way, they now know who he was. And here's a little bit more about this, just to add a little more to it. The discovery of a boy was one of Oregon's oldest unidentified murder or unidentified cases is now has a name, Stevie Crawford. A two-year-old child was found dead in the Oregon mountains after having been identified. Um, they said that the child's body was wrapped in, he was fully clothed, and wrapped in a quilt that was tied um, with a rope or something of that nature I, I, uh, with wire. Someone had bound the body in wire and attempted to weigh it down. It's possible that they suffocated the child or maybe a, a, a hard hit or it could, he could have died from a blunt force injury or, you know, a brain bleed or something like that. And um, that was the reason why they didn't. We're not interested in prosecuting this case. The detective said in 2009, we have a responsibility to identify the child's remains. That is all this case is about. The child was buried at Medford Hillside Cemetery beneath a headstone that read Baby Doe, known only to God. In 2007, Fagan, the detective, uncovered 11 paper boxes marked old sheriff's cases. Now, if I remember right, They had destroyed some old cases, some old case files. I feel we are very fortunate in this day and age to have the DNA databases and technology that we have. We would not have been able to find out who this child was without those. The boy's case was the only one in the box out of 11 paper boxes marked old cases that had not been closed. Nobody knew about it. There was no record. Every, everything we had on that case was in that file. He explained why he thought the case had gone unsolved. The case kind of went cold quickly because it was right around the time of the Kennedy assassination. There were a lot of priorities in the country at that time. This case just kind of fell through the cracks. The sheriff's office only released the sheriff's office's press release said they drew DNA from the boy's body in 2008. The tiny body was exhumed from its resting place and DNA sample was taken. This lead also went cold when CODIS returned no matches. Um, when no DNA results were returned, the case of Baby Doe remained at a standstill until a recent tip came through the sheriff's office through Facebook Messenger. This has not been made public. Sheriff Nate Sickler contacted the medical examiner. The boy's DNA was sent to Parabon Nano Labs. The sample was processed through phenotyping and genetic genealogy. They were able to locate two potential siblings one of them, a half-brother, located in Ohio. The half-brother also shared the same mother with the boy and told police that he had a younger brother who had disappeared from New Mexico. The child had Down syndrome. Upon further investigation, a birth certificate was discovered. The King Creek baby doe had a name, Stevie Crawford. To have a case that we're able to bring a story back to life and reunite him 
give him a name. They don't say whether they're looking into this as a case of homicide, but it would probably be pretty hard to determine um, who may be responsible for that if it was. The mother is dead. The potential father is dead. I'm sure that they maybe are checking for potential siblings through the father as well to see if they can make a match there, but the story that the siblings tell is that the father, you know, wasn't in the child's life. And so if I had to lay down a bet on this and say who might have been responsible, I would say it was the mother. Now, some people would argue that they that whoever did that was just simply trying to conceal this body to keep it from being found. Someone else might argue and say, well, it sounds as though they were trying to almost protect the body in the person's mind by wrapping the body, fully dressing the body and wrapping the body in this quilt and putting wire around it and trying to weigh it down. And so I don't know. I, I'm Like I said, maybe I'm overthinking things. But at least now this child has a name. And just like the little boy in Philadelphia whose name was recently discovered, the boy in the box from 1950s, um, he also has a name. Both these children will now have a headstone with their name and will no longer be just known as, you know, Baby Doe or John Doe or you know, unknown child. They now are known. Um, that's just one story I wanted to share. Thank you all for listening.